Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, I've got to say I was quite surprised to read this article, also quite surprised that no one else has spoken about it. It's been out for quite a few days. This is a quote from a Fox News article that came out about four days ago on Wednesday, and there's actually kind of harsh criticism for Adventures with Purpose in that article. This is a quote from the article. Bishop said he became a certified diver in 2020. Waters was particularly upset by Bishop's foul play theory. Waters called Adventures with Purpose irresponsible for publicly broaching their foul play theory. Then she said, 90% of vehicles found with people in it, they're normally found in the back. If it's an SUV, they're in the hatch. End quote. Now, I must say, when I read those sentences in that Fox News article, I must admit I was pretty confused. For starters, AWP have had a hero's welcome everywhere, not only on true crime channels, but the mainstream media as well. Almost to a fault, everyone has hailed AWP as those who made the long-awaited breakthrough in the Kylie Rodney case. So, was this article even accurate? And who is this what is person quoted by Fox News? Do they even know AWP? Before we get to the rest of this episode, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. Bear in mind at the end of this episode, I'm also going to be talking about is breaking news in the Kylie Rodney case, is there going to be an update from law enforcement early next week? How likely is that? Right? So stay tuned for that. And let's get started. So, I saw this comment about Bishop becoming a certified dive in 2020, and I thought I would go and check, see if it's true. So, I went to Doug's Instagram to to check the claim, and I found this Instagram post. If the date is accurate, he became a certified diver in September 2021. If that's true, then Doug has been a certified diver for less than a year when Kylie Rodney was found. But why should that matter? Nick Rin was the diver who found Kylie, not Doug. And there's another diver on AWP's team as well, Jared. So why would Doug's certification even matter? The article also makes it explicit that former colleagues of AWP, I don't know if that's the right word, partners, ex-partners, in the sense that one time they worked together on a dive, are quite critical of them. Again, you've got to ask, Cheapers, is this sour grapes? Is it a jealous rival that's saying something. Anyway, in the article, it says, quote, Waters sold Adventures with Purpose, their first sonar machine in 2019, after they collaborated on the Nathaniel Ashby case in Missouri. Waters identified a car in the Missouri River, and LASIK, I think that's a reference to Jared, volunteered to dive in the rough currents. They eventually pulled out Ashby's truck with his remains still inside. And then this is a quote from Waters saying, I hear them saying they're the world's best. And I'm thinking, you guys have only been doing this a few years. And that's the end of the quote from the article. Uh, What can one say about this? It's quite odd that the former collaborators, that's probably the best word, don't seem too chuffed with AWP here. But if we look beyond ego and motives, do they have a point in saying, You guys have only been doing this a few years. Can you say three years isn't a very long time? Now, on the surface, if it's true that they got their their first sonar machine three years ago and Doug only got certified a year ago, then maybe they are fairly new to the game. But if you dig a little deeper, AWP have solved 24 cases in three years. That's averaging about eight cases a year, almost one a month, right? That's quite a lot of experience in quite a short time. So their rate of case solving is faster than the understated husband and wife team. Now we're going to get to them in a moment, but I must say when you look at AWP, you look at the, the, the men in that team and you look at the merchandise and the branding, it couldn't be more different. AWP couldn't be more different to this other team, Sonar Search and Recovery, which is very understated, very low-key, but also seem to have an excellent reputation. 
If you go into their backstory, Sonar Search and Recovery have found about four to five times as many missing people as AWP over more than 15 years. That's 104 recoveries in 17 years. It comes to an average of just over six per year or one every second month. So that is a lot slower rate than AWP's rate of almost one per month. But if they lack speed, I'm talking about sonar search and recovery, then 17 years and 104 recoveries, that, that's clearly a lot of experience. But what does AWP say about them? And them is Dennis and Tammy Waters of Sonar Search and Recovery. It's actually a non-profit. It's been around since 2005. What does AWP say about them? According to the article, quote, Bishop said he highly respects the Waterses and calls them one of the most distinguished teams who do this work. And this is a direct quote from him. He said, they are the godfathers of doing what we do. So compared to them, no one has that kind of experience. And then he goes on to say, but their operation is different. They came up in a time without social media and get their cases directly from law enforcement, end quote. So although um, they are different, it seems mostly they are different in terms of marketing and to some extent money. The one is a non-profit, well, well clearly a non-profit. So whatever we may say or think about Sonar Search and Recovery, AWP seems to afford them the highest respect. On that basis alone, maybe the opinion of Sonar Search and Recovery is worth a second glance. Do you agree with that? I mean, they obviously have the experience. So have a look at the two lines below those highlighted in blue in this largely overlooked article from Fox News. It came out a few days ago, as I say, on Wednesday, September 14th. The engine is the heaviest part of the car and it nosedives first. As the vehicle is sinking, they're climbing to the back to try to stay up out of the water. They're chasing the air, what is said. Now that's something I researched and simply saw in the Mythbusters episode. You, you saw what Adam was doing in that and that seems to be what everyone does in that situation. If you don't have oxygen, if you can't get out your vehicle. And isn't that also what happened in New Zealand? Wasn't she chasing the air too? A lot of people told me I was wrong and that this case is totally different because it's a SUV. So why aren't Sonar Search and Rescue saying that? They say in a SUV, they're in the hatch. Kylie was in a SUV. She was in the hatch. That's another way of saying you would expect someone in an accident to be in that scenario, not that if they're in that scenario, it means foul play. She's saying that is exactly where you'd expect to find them. Now, according to the team who have made 104 recoveries, if that's what you'd expect to find, how can it be suspicious? You kind of get the idea, Sonar Search and Rescue are saying, we don't think it's suspicious, or it may not be suspicious or it may not necessarily be suspicious. Nick Rin basically said he thought it was suspicious because Kylie was in the back. I don't think you can argue that Sonar Search and Recovery didn't watch the AWP video because it came out two weeks before the article came out, and they've since been all over the place talking about why their discovery is so suspicious. So the impression I get is that they've been watching this and be feeling kind of... You could either say jealous or insecure or something, or you could say they were sufficiently upset and disagreed to such an extent that they eventually felt they had to say something. Anyway, that brings us to Wacky Wednesday. Wednesday was the day that the Fox News article came out. It was a weird day in the Kylie Rodney case. Besides the unusual criticism in the mainstream media, that was the same day one of the AWP members said in a live, if you want to criticize us, be prepared to have the world come down on you. Do you think that was a reference to the godfathers of search and rescue? Because they did criticize them. I mean, what is in a special section of the article titled Criticism went on to say this as well. They're not the police. They're not investigators. That call is for law enforcement to make. 
if you have the proper experience, you wouldn't go blabbing like this. In other words, she's saying not it's not even so much um, whether it's foul play or not, that you simply wouldn't say anything um, if you were experienced. You would kind of respect law enforcement. And this is a search and recovery team that works with law enforcement directly. They get all of their cases from law enforcement. So they obviously know what some of these protocols are. The article then doesn't mince words. It says, quote, she slammed Bishop for announcing the, the recovery of Rodney on Facebook before law enforcement even arrived at the crime scene and one day before the sheriff's office confirmed the remains belonged to the missing teen. That was very not right, she said. And um, one's got to wonder if that's not right, why did it happen? Well, isn't a possible answer that they wanted to lead the narrative? They wanted the narrative to start with them kind of on social media and on Facebook, not wait for uh, law enforcement to say something and then they are law enforcement are sort of setting the tone for the narrative. Isn't it that they wanted to set the tone for the narrative? Anyway, two articles came out on the same day on Wednesday, which I also thought was weird. Both of them in the mainstream media. One was from Fox News, the one I've just quoted, saying, the Nevada Sheriff's County office said they would not provide any updates on the case until November. Bishop said the lengthy delay suggests something other than an accident. Then on the very same day, there was another article from News Nation saying something totally different, that the Nevada Sheriff's office hoped to provide an update on the case next week. Not in November, not even in October, but like maybe even tomorrow. So what can we read from that? What can we interpret from that? I think one interpretation is if Doug is saying the reason the investigation is taking so long going on until November is because it suggests they're investigating something other than an accident. Well, couldn't it be if they're going to provide an update and if the update is going to be some kind of major announcement, doesn't that mean it's not foul play? In other words, taking Doug's point if the investigation was taking a really long time, well, if it's now going to um, kind of end, I've actually heard the investigation has already ended. Um, and also the autopsy has been done. This suggests that the toxicology has been done. So if the case is being concluded earlier rather than later, what do you think that means? I know what I think. What do you think? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.